It's there, God damn it. He doesn't want to go that way. Maybe he wants to go this way. He doesn't want to go that way. Maybe he wants to go this way. I don't know. I give up. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and welcome to the review of the RX 6750 XT, also known as the most disappointing GPU release so far this year. Wait, there was a couple others, right? When did the 6500 XT release? Hmm. When was the RTX 3050 release? Wow, we're getting some really bad GPUs this year. Let's take a look at the hash rates right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is my go-to centralized exchange for liquidating my crypto assets. With their Crypto.com Visa debit card, I can load up my mined Ethereum to pay for power and other operating costs quickly while earning up to 8% cash back. In addition to the Visa debit card, there are additional fiat options including wire transfers to easily receive your profits. Crypto.com also offers additional services including trading and even staking to earn additional revenue revenue on your investments. Join 10 million plus users buying and selling 100 plus cryptocurrencies at true cost by using my affiliate link in the description for a $25 funding bonus or enter referral code SOAT at sign up for the same bonus. Remember, cryptocurrency investment comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Welcome back. So as always, we'll go over the test bench first. It's right back here. We're running the Ryzen 7 5800X3D with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Neo. And that is pretty much all on an NVMe drive, a one terabyte PCIe 4.0 Express. It's a, it's a pretty good test system. So we don't have to worry about that. To test the power, we essentially have a power supply that is hooked in to basically a kilowatt separate from everything else. Now, to be clear, it's a 120 volts, so you're not going to get perfect efficiency and the power supply itself is gold rated. Obviously, your mileage will vary depending on the circuit you're running as well as the power supply efficiency. Obviously, a platinum rated power supply is going to be more efficient and even more efficient than that would be something on like a 220 volt or 240 volt circuit with of course a platinum rated power supply. But this will give you a good idea if you're stateside and you're mining from home, what your 120 volt circuit's gonna be doing. So there is that set aside. It's all basically running through a riser and set up there. Now, this particular testing did go through a lot more steps and processes than I typically do. Uh, basically, usually I run the algos, I get the overclocks in, I get do the best I can with overclocks. Obviously, you guys will educate me on anything I may have missed or anything like that, and sometimes we have to rework the numbers, but we'll typically go through that and then just dump the numbers. But because the performance was so terrible, I tried a few other things, and unfortunately, none of them really worked. One, we went off of Windows and we hopped onto Hive OS. Well, the problem with Hive OS is that the drivers for Linux for the 6750 XT are not in, so it just shows up as an RX 6700 series GPU. Now, is that going to affect hash rate? Possibly, not likely, but possibly. Why do I say not likely? Because as far as the Ethereum hash rates go, which are really the disappointing ones, and the Ergo hash rates go, which are another disappointing ones, that those remain the same between essentially Hive OS and Windows. So we didn't have to really worry about that too much. But other than that, we also spent a lot of time trying to figure out more power tool, which we were successful there mildly. And that more power tool on Windows isn't really going to affect you on Hive because you can just go ahead and set that core voltage down. It's not going to be as big of a deal for you. Let's get the phone out of the way. So... Uh, w you can do the more power tool. You can get that set up. We showed you guys how to do that on the 600 series. As far as it goes, you can get down to 680 millivolts in more power tool, which is going to bring you down to about 668 millivolts at the very bottom end. That's going to be beneficial in both Ethereum and Ergo as you're going to be able to turn those clocks down, the core clock, and then it's going to basically reduce your uh, voltage, which is going to reduce your power consumption. 
Unfortunately, it didn't do that very well here. Let's go over the specifications. I've been kind of rambling on. All right, so let's go over specifications. The one we went with or that we were able to get for testing was the ASRock RX 6750 XT Challenger Pro. Not necessarily the one I would want to pick out, but it is a little bit better than the lower level challengers, the, the, like the Challenger D with the two fan cooler. This does have a three fan cooler. It's still gonna come down to a pretty disappointing performance on the memory cooling just because of the design of the heatsink itself. We could talk about this in a breakdown later on, but the card's kind of new, so we aren't going to do a breakdown at this time. That being said, the base clock is 2235 megahertz with a boost clock of 2618 megahertz. It appears to hit that all the time. The memory clock is 2250 megahertz, and that's going to be 18 gigabits per second effective. This is where we were expecting the refresh of the RDNA 2 to pick up the performance in mining, specifically on basically memory intensive algorithms. However, that didn't really prove out to be true, and you'll see that in a second. The memory bus is 192-bit. It is GDDR6. The memory size is 12 gigabytes, and the band bandwidth is 432 gigabytes a second. So by all facets of the imagination, you would assume that it gets a better hash rate than the RX 6700, its predecessor. However, that's not exactly what happened, unfortunately, and we're still not really clear as to why. Basically, if we took a look at Ethereum right off of the bat and ran it with Team Red Miner, the latest version, 0.9.4, I believe it is, we got 39 mega hash a second. That's pretty disappointing right out of the box. But maybe the memory overclock could solve it. So we overclocked the memory to 2,312, which is the max that you can overclock it to without using more power tool. However, when we tried to use more power tool to overclock the memory more, we didn't get any... Uh, additional hash rate because it just wasn't stable. So the memory's already getting pushed, unfortunately, as far as it can, and that may be part of the problem here. I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of the timings being different with this Samsung memory due to the speeds being higher. And that could actually answer pretty much everything that's going on here. It's just really hard to pull all of the BIOS data, data because we don't have a good way to read it right now. I am going to be digging into that a little bit more, though, as we move on. But with that memory overclock, <coughs> we only got to 40.5 mega hash a second. Now, we talked about turning down the core voltage, all that sort of stuff. And once we did that, we were able to get the, the, the power down to, like, 100 watts at the wall, which is good, but not fantastic, right? You get much better performance out of a 6700, which can go all the way up to 47 mega hash a second at around the same power, if not even a little bit lower. And you can get much lower power and much better efficiency out of 6600 or a 6600 XT. So that's going to be your Ethereum and your Ethereum classic hash rates, 40 mega hash a second at 99 watts. And things didn't get any better with Ergo, which is, again, another memory-intensive algorithm. And whereas on the RX 6700 XT, we were seeing 90 mega hash a second, on Ergo, we're only seeing 80 mega hash a second. We did drop a few watts down to 96 watts at the wall, which is good. But we're 10 mega hash lower than the predecessor, which has slower memory. It doesn't make any sense unless, of course, they are loosening those timings a ton to achieve those higher memory speeds. And that should translate still into higher hash rate because the total bandwidth is increased, but that is not what it's translating into for mining. So, unfortunately, if you were looking at this GPU for mining Ethereum or Ergo and hoping that the memory performance was improved and it would do better on memory intensive algorithms, that's not the case. And I'm disappointed in it as well. There is some light at the end of the tunnel, though, and that is that the core improvements is offering some improvements in other algorithms. The first big one that we noticed this in that does make it actually more profitable than the RX 6700 was Kryptonite GPU, which is going to be things like Equilibria, Ryo, etc. And with that, this particular card was doing 2,333 hash a second at 120 watts. That is much better than the 2,000 hash a second you get on the 6700 XT. 
So there is performance improvements there. Doing the overclocking and messing with it at all didn't really seem to give us any sort of boost in the hash rate on this particular algorithm. That being said, we also checked Flux, of course. And Flux is another one where we do see some performance improvement on the 6750 XT versus the 6700. Now on the 6700, that's gonna be 37 solutions a second. On the 6750 XT, we were able to get to 43 solutions a second at 206 watts. Yes, the power consumption's a little high here, I think. I think you can even get the 6700 a little lower than that, but we were, trying to lean on that core overclock to go ahead and bump that rate up to 43 hash a second. That being said, of course, you could tune that in to get a better efficiency rating. And it's really hard to compare wattage, I think, with uh, flux at this point. Um, that being said, it's not as bad as comparing wattage for like Kapow or Firo or something like that. So we got, once again, about six solutions a second, more than we got on the 6700 XT, meaning that there's some light at the end of the tunnel, once again, right? Your Crypto Knight GPU, your Flux. And it does get better too, because both Kapow for Ravencoin and Firo Proof of Work for Firo, which are pretty much exactly the same as far as hash rates go. With the overclocks that we got in, we're doing 27 mega hash a second at 164 watts. That in comparison to the 6700 is about five mega hash a second more. So we're seeing the performance improvements on the core improvement sides. Algorithms that do rely a little bit or a lot of bit on core do seem to perform very well here. It's kind of baffling because I was expecting kind of the opposite. Well, maybe not the complete opposite. I was expecting performance improvements across the board, but unfortunately that just didn't end up being the case. Now the markets are ever shifting and things are getting crazy. So if you watch one of my old review videos, like we always say in there, check the profitability according to the numbers that I reported on. That being said, we will check profitability for you guys and we have them all queued in here. And as you can see, Ryo is in first, giving you 94 cents a day after power. Firo proof of work is at 67 cents a day after power. Equilibria is at 77 cents a day after power. Ravencoin's at 66 cents a day after power. And Ethereum is at 79 cents a day after power and then we have to scroll down quite a bit before we get to flux which is at 24 cents a day after power ethereum classic at 37 cents a day after power and ergo at 37 cents a day after power so we have to scroll down pretty far there there are you know there is some profitability here that is decent on some of these coins but we still don't know what's going to hap happen post merge it's not good at ethereum and the price point is at a point where I don't think that it's very viable for you to be purchasing these at this time, brand new off the shelf. And you may be better served buying some used 6600s or like I've stated a lot in the shows recently, because you have more lenience with the type of algorithms you can mine on NVIDIA right now, green team looks a little bit more appealing moving forward with the threat of the merge coming so close. So that's my review for the RX 6750 XT, specifically the ASRock Challenger Pro. I'm gonna give a shout out to Metal Miner for getting me this card to borrow and go ahead and do the testing for you guys. So give him a shout out down in the description below. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the like, comment, subscribe, notification bell so you're notified when we do go ahead and post videos or go live for the morning show, which we do every day, Monday through Friday, 99, 9.45 a.m. Central to 10.45 a.m. Central. That's 10.45 a.m. Eastern for those that are on the East Coast. Thanks again for watching. Thanks to Metal Miner for going ahead and supplying me with the GPU. My light broke, so we didn't do B-roll. Don't worry, I'm getting a new light. We will do more B-roll, but I wanted to get this review up. Tomorrow we should have the update for the RTX 3050 Ergo hash rate, so look forward to that. And I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more, or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.